Hey folks, my name is Brad Martin, and today we are way off the beaten path up here in the mountains of Vermont. And as you can probably tell, looking around behind me, this property is extremely thick and overgrown. But after doing some research, I am fairly certain there used to be a home here at the end of the 1700s. And while there's no stone walls or even a foundation, I think it was a log cabin, and we're not gonna be able to find out until we get our metal detector unpacked, start swinging around and digging some holes. Let's see what we can find. All right, well, I have been wandering for, I don't know, 20 minutes, and uh, there's not much of anything out here, but I just did find my first object, a little shoe. So, you know, there was clearly activity here, whether it was habitation or not, I have no idea. Let's keep searching and find out. Great target, 81 on the XP dais. Let's see. Huh. So this <clears throat> is not really anything special except it's brass. I scratched it and it, it has a green patina underneath the mud. And it appears to be an ingot. You know, you would have bought this um, as stock to be used for you know, various things. And it's very heavy, and I've never found a piece of brass like this. Lead, often, is what we find, because they use lead for a myriad of things. But this, I've never found an ingot of brass before. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Interesting, anyways. <sighs> okay, I uh, got a pretty good target in the 90s. Uh, I just saw down here in the hole this. Can you see that? It's like a round rim, and it looks thick enough to possibly be a coin. Hopefully. Man, I don't know. Trying to decide if I want to spray this with water, or if I want to hit it with a toothbrush. Uh, now, in past videos, I say over and over how I don't spray uh, copper with water because it'll spray the nice green patina off. Uh, but this, <laughs> there's no nice patina on this. So I'm going to spray it because it is already wet from the ground. And hopefully we can get some, some detail off of it. Well, I don't know for sure because it is in such rough shape. But maybe you can see there's some leaves there. You see that? Some leaves or some ivy. You know, maybe once I get it home, I'll be able to get it cleaned up a little bit. Either way, it's definitely an old copper coin. If it's not the 1700s, I would be very surprised. Looks like all we're going to have to go off of is that wreath. <laughs> That's okay. Great find. We're going to scan this area. See if maybe we can find some more. All right, well, I'm going to try to reenact what just happened because I was in such a panic, I forgot to get the camera out to kind of explain what was happening. So first, a little backstory. I carry this little thing called a pinpointer. And once I get the hole opened up, I stick it down there and it helps me locate whatever it is I'm looking for. And sometimes when you find something cool and I got my camera out, I'm talking to the camera, I'm showing the camera, fill in the hole, I get up and I walk away, you forget your pinpointer in the hole or next to the hole. And for several years, I carried my pinpointer on a tether, like one of those keychain strings, you know, that kind of retracts. But it would get caught on twigs and, and limbs. Dirt would get in there and it'd break. I have to buy another one. So I stopped doing that. Just found that copper about 20 minutes ago. I haven't had a target since then. And I'm pretty sure that's where I left my pinpointer because it's not in my holster. So everywhere looks the same out here. You know, where, where was I? Where was that copper? I don't think it was far. But then I remembered that my XP Deus has a setting on it that even if the pinpointer is off, it will send us a signal out to it and the thing will beep. Pinpointers, research. Can you hear that? It's this way. 
and there it lay. That's the first time I've lost my pinpointer with the XP Deus. Man, that saved me. See what else we can find now that we have our pinpointer back. Pretty nice target here. It's faint, which probably means it's deep. Oh, I see it. I see it. Did you see it come out? Right here. Is it complete or is it broken? Oh, some. Uh, I, I thought it was a key. But it's not a key. It's kind of a key. It's a winder. For a clock, I would suspect. So cool. I've, uh... Oh, that's not true. I was gonna say, I've never found one not attached to the clock. Usually they're they're still on the clock, but I, I did uh, find a much later one. 1920s, but this... This is old. An old clock winder. Super cool. Personal item. Wonder what they would have done if they lost this. <laughs> it just turned it by hand, I guess. I don't know. So cool. Great target. 88. Is it this? Yes, it is. Well, that is a little buckle, but it's a brass one. Typically when we find these uh, kind of little horse tack buckles, they are all iron. But this one, this brass sounded great on the metal detector. This would have been for, uh, like a harness for an ox or a uh, sleigh or, you know, whatever they had animals doing here. The pin just fell off, but we'll keep it all together. Pretty cool. I love finding brass buckles because Unlike the iron ones, they hold up very, very well. Being uh, a novice leather worker, I try to at least put these things back to work uh, in the things that I make. I think this one might be a good candidate. Pretty cool. Little brass buckle. Okay, holy smokes, I don't know what this is. I think it might be silver. I'm shaking. Uh, and uh, it's got stuff all over it. There's there's etching all over it. Whew, I'm shaking. Okay, let me get my water out here. Oh my God! There's a date. There's a date on whatever the heck this thing is. Oh my gosh! May five, seventeen something. You have got to be kidding me. Born. It says born. There's a name on here. Oh my gosh. Look at this side. I gotta get out of the sun here. Can you see that? That's like a figure of a person. There is a, uh, a nude person with some wheat over on the right holding a bird. I, uh, I'm gonna hide the last name for the privacy of uh, the person that owns the land that I'm on today. If this person did in fact live here, it would be easy to figure out where I am. So, Anna A.L. So you can see up at the top it says M-I-F-S. Back, I don't know when they switched over, but at least in the early 1800s, uh, double S's were replaced by an F. So that would be Miss Anna A.L. Born May 5th, 1794. And there's a little bird on the back. This thing is incredible. To have a name and a date, piece of silver, clearly bent up, who knows what happened to it uh, after it was dropped. So incredible, the treasure of the day. Treasure of the year, maybe. Can't believe it. Never found something as unique as this, as personal to the owner. 
absolutely incredible. What else is there to say? Man, that little silver tag has got to be one of the coolest things I've ever found. It's a precious metal. It has a hand etched design on the back, which is a little bit mysterious. It's like a carrier pigeon or something on a string. And it has the name of a person, the date they were born. It's going to allow me to do research on this person, find out if this is where they lived, if they were a relative, if they were just passing through. It might even be able to be returned to the family. How cool would that be? I don't know if we're gonna to top that today, but we're gonna keep searching, see what else we can find here. Even if we don't find anything else, that made the day worth it. just had uh, an okay scratchy target, uh, nothing to get too excited about. Dug my hole. We've got a clump of dirt here with maybe a coin. Might be a real fat button, but we're gonna break it open together. Aha, uh -huh. it's a button. Uh, there's a little something. I think it's just a pretty design. Let me Get out my toothbrush here. Okay, well it appears to just be a design, but it is an old button that was cut. Now, uh, was that cut with some snippers or was it cut with an old plow out here? Not sure, but uh, it is an old, what appears to be pewter button, uh, 1700s in my opinion. Don't think that the symbol represents anything. I think it's just a, a pretty design, but if you know better, let me know. It's a good find. And cool that uh, we got to see it come out of the clump like that. All right, onward. So I find uh, people who metal detect places like this often find uh, the big, long side blades or sickle blades, you know, the Grim Reaper tool. And they're cool, uh, but you know, you, you find a dozen of them, two dozen of them a year they gradually get less and less cool. I just got a target, and that was poking out of the hole. And I said, ah, another side blade. Check this out. That is cool. I've never found one of these. This is a little handheld uh, sickle. I, would, I think this is a sickle. That is awesome. Um, and, you know, typically, I think I brought home one of the big, long, double-handed side blades. This, though, this is going to get a spot in my main little treasure room. This is super cool. Uh, looks like it's probably going to clean up pretty good. Maybe I'll even put a new little wood handle on it. I'll have to do some research to see uh, what they looked like, but that's certainly what that is. A little, you know, just a little snapshot of what life was like a couple hundred years ago. They didn't have weed whackers. <laughs> they had these. Well, I do believe I got another copper. I, uh, I didn't get the filming of this one ahead of time because it rang so low. Let's see if I can get it on my machine here. Yeah, it's in the 70s, which, you know, typically coins are in the high 80s, lower 90s, copper coins. Uh, and this one is in the 70s, which leads me to believe it's probably British. But man, this appears to be pretty rough. Let me work on this, see if I can get it cleaned up a little bit. All right, well, I'll shine my flashlight on it sideways here. And I, I think I see a left-facing bust. Maybe. It might, it might be right-facing. I'm pretty sure that's a bust, though. And on this side... Really, there's there's not a so I'm you know it's a coin it's definitely a coin it's not a fat button um, I'm gonna guess that it's British so it could really you know depending on if it's a George the second or a George the third it could vary anywhere from 1720 to right up until the 1800s but I wish it was in better condition but you know what we found it 
If I am able to get it identified anymore at home, I'll certainly let you know. Two coppers, good day my book. All right, folks, it's gonna do it for me today. This place is interesting. Was there a home? I don't know. There weren't a big patch of nails somewhere out here. And you know, some places I detect that were homes, you, know, you find targets everywhere. I come home with two dozen buttons and drawer poles and spoons and forks. And here, I would go 20, 30 minutes without finding a new target. But then when I did find something, there were coins, that silver tag, interesting things. Uh, so it was certainly worth my time but man, the terrain made for a hard day. All of these fallen trees, and specifically these uh, small pines. My arms are all scraped up trying to push my way through them, but I had fun. We found some cool stuff. I've got it all laid out here. Let's take a look at it all. All right, I did my best to kind of get it all in frame with the sickle here. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best to put a new handle on, get it cleaned up, all the rust off, and then hang it up on my treasure room wall with my other kind of colonial era tools. Two buckles, one of them is iron, and then that goes along with our brass one we found. I did find one pretty good sized musket ball. And on top of that is the winder. Now I said it was probably a clock winder, and it probably is, but you know, it could have wound really anything else that has clockwork. Um, kind of use our imagination. If they were here in the early 1800s, um, there could have been any manner of things that uh, you would have wanted to wind. So who knows? I'm going to say it's a clock winder though. I did get a pair of what I'm going to call colonial coppers, at least in the late 1700s. If I'm able to identify them, hopefully you know by now. Uh, and then last but not least, the star of the show, the silver uh, medallion uh, tag, whether this was a necklace or a charm, it has this really interesting etching on the back of uh, someone holding a bird with a string attached, which looks like it maybe came out of this chest. I thought it was a seat at first because they're sitting on it, but it almost looks like a chest and uh, some wheat on the side. And then on this side, Miss Anna A.L. One of the coolest things I've ever found for sure. All right, folks, well, I wanna thank you again for joining me up here in the mountains of Vermont. And hopefully I'll see you next Friday when we're back up here doing it all over again. See you there.